Okay, I'm not going to read it back again. We need to calculate the contribution margin ratio for two marks. All right, the fixed cost, which is the only cost, is 900,000. And uh, the selling price of a ticket is 1,200. And the cost is likely to be in the region of 900 per ticket. So this is your variable cost per unit per ticket. Okay. Now, in order to do these, you have to know the formula for first the break-even point and the contribution margin ratio. The contribution margin ratio is the selling price minus the variable cost that will give us the contribution and we divide it by the selling price again. This is to get a proportion. Then we multiply it by 100 to get a percentage. It works out to 25%. Okay, next we are asked for the number of tickets that must be sold to break even in units and dollars. Okay, the break even point is the fixed cost divided by the contribution. We just calculated contribution up here as 300. So we divide that by that and we get 3,000 units to break even. If we want to get it in dollars, we could simply multiply the 3,000 by the 1,200 as we uh, showed on here. And we'll get, or oh, there's another way as well. We take the fixed cost and divide it by the contribution margin ratio which we calculated up here. And we'll get the same 36 subroom. Okay. Our next part is asking for a target profit. How much tickets must be sold in order to make a target profit of 50,000? Okay, so you want a target profit of 50,000 to get the break even point. What we did was add or uh, divide the fixed cost by the contribution but to get a target profit, right? You simply take the fixed cost, add on the target profit, whatever it is, and divide it by the contribution per unit, we'll get 3,167 tickets. That takes care of part E. Part B, fanciful enterprises will have to consider several financial factors, such as cost of meals, before determining the proposed selling price of $1,200 per ticket. Identify four non-financial factors, which can also, okay, the emphasis is non-financial factors. Uh, all right. Okay, so non-financial factors would be things like the market demand, you have economic factors. Well, this is wouldn't be a non-financial factor, really. Environmental, competition, political, 
ethical and social right and we can look up in a any good textbook and see what these things are in relation to pricing decisions okay but uh, since it's only four marks for four you shouldn't have very long um, thing. if you're going to explain one of these it simply asks you to identify it so you don't need to go into any great detail explaining what how those will in back your decision okay uh, we are asked to do a uh, explain each of the following project appraisal technique Payback period, internal rate of return, net present value, and you should include in your answer what the techniques seek to achieve, how the decision is made, and one piece of information required for calculation. We look and we see it's worth nine marks, so that means each one of these should be worth three marks, right? And then you have three things here so each one of these which should be worth one mark All right recipe what we were seek to determine the project with the shortest period when the initial investment can be recovered all right and the decision is made by calculating the next seven per year this should be net saving per year for each project under comparison and reducing the initial cost by the net income. Okay, so this is how much, this how fast you could pay back for the investment and the project recovers the initial cost, the fastest is chosen, right? Your information that you need is the initial cost of the product and the net savings per year or the net amount that you're going to pay back every year internal rate of return seeks to find the project whose rate of return is above the company's set rate of return All right so the company has a set rate of return and when you do your appraisal, if the rate of return you get from your appraisal is above the company's set rate of return, you will accept that I that project. So decision is made calculating the rate of return for each project. These are then compared with the company's rate and the project with the highest above the company's rate is chosen. Okay, so this is if you are choosing between more than one project. If you are just appraising one project itself, you just check to see if the IR is above the company's rate of return. Okay, NPV seeks to find the project with the increased net savings discounted to pv the present value okay so what you are doing is you're checking the returns you are discounting them to take into consideration the value of money and then you are going to make the decision the project with the highest net savings per year as discounted by this should be as discounted to PV and compared the one with the increase NPV is 
true. The increased NPV means the uh, NPV should be positive. Okay. Information that you need is the initial cost of the investment, the net savings per year, discount factors, and salvage value. Okay. Um, I use the term net savings here to mean the net returns, right? Either in cash or in income. Okay, so that takes care of part C. Part D deals with uh, standard course. So Fanciful Enterprises has built miniature guard huts for the venture. The following information has been provided. Number of units produced, 800. Number of actual hours work, 600. Total actual direct labor costs, 9,000. Materials purchased, 9,000 feet. Materials used in production, 1,000 feet cost per foot of raw material, 57. The standard cost has the following information, direct labor, standard hours, and the rate power, direct material. Okay, so we have 2.5 standard hours and $12 as the rate. The direct material is 1.5. Okay, that would be feet and eight dollars a feet. And we are asked to calculate the labor rate variance and the labor efficiency variance and the material price variance, material quantity variance. So we Look at the calculations on this side. All right, the labor rate variance. Like I said, you have to memorize these formulas as first. Afterwards, you can figure it out. Notice if you are dealing with the rate variance, you minus the two rates and you multiply it by the hours. Okay, so we'll get. Uh, the first rate is 9,000 divided by 600. That the actual rate, you'll get that from here. You have to work it out because it is not given down here, right? So you take the 9,000 and you divide it by the six and you'll get the rate, okay? And then you minus the standard rate, which is given over here. When you finish that, then we multiply by 600, okay? Now you have to be careful when you are doing this on a calculator. Make sure you work out the inside here, get an answer and then multiply it by the 600. If you attempt to punch it in as it is there, you're gonna get all kind of curious figures other than the 1800 here, okay? The labor efficiency variance, this time you're dealing with usage, so you want to minus the actual hours from the standard hours and you multiply it by the standard rate. Okay, so again, this time we have to calculate the standard hour. I have the wrong side here. Let's see. The here. Uh, the 800 hour units by
2.5 hours, right? No, it's not going to be right? And the 600 minus it. I multiply by the $12. All right, again, be careful how you're working it out. And you should get 16,000. 800 favorable. The material price variance, again we minus the prices and multiply it by the quantity. So it's 7 minus 8 by 9. Let's make sure. 7, right, and 8. Okay. Now, how we know that the thing is favorable is if the uh, if the uh, actual is less than the standard, then it's favorable. If the actual is greater, then it's unfavorable or adverse. The material price quantity variance we take. We deal with quantities, so we minus the quantities and multiply it by the price. Okay, and we have to work out the quantity again for the standard 800 by 1.5. We minus it from the thousand, we get two multiplied by eight, 1600 free verbal. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the question.